Rounding out the week with President Biden's address to the nation. The Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire. Whoops. I mean, this speech, to unify the nation? Does this look like a unifying stance? Remember when he said he would unify the nation less than two years ago? It's time to put away the harsh rhetoric, lower the temperature, see each other again, listen to each other again. And to make progress, we have to stop treating our opponents as our enemies. They are not our enemies, they are Americans. Far cry from what we saw Thursday night. Yeah, the imagery there was almost satanic with that blood red uh, lighting and the two Marines behind him. It was just insane. Look, this was a garbage speech by a garbage president. Now watch as CNN tries to adjust the blood red background into a more softer pink. Only if we the people accept the results of free and fair elections. Only if we the people see politics not as total war, but mediation of our differences. Most of Biden's speech was centered around attacking half the country that doesn't agree with his leadership. But now the backtrack, after even some CNN talking heads blasted Biden for using the military backdrop in his declaration of war against opposition. Mr. President, do you consider all Trump supporters to be a threat to the country? No, everyone. Oh. Come on, look, guys. Come on, everyone. Come on, As Geller Report points out, missing from the speech, nothing to lower inflation, nothing to reduce crime, nothing to secure the southern border. Speaking of the southern border, why is Peter Ducey the only reporter that challenges the White House? Submit protocols, I'd refer you to them. They have their own specific protocols as well. But so they're two different things. They're two different things. But so are, how is it two different things? Somebody unvaccinated comes over on a plane. You say that's not okay. Somebody walks into Texas or Arizona unvaccinated, they're allowed to stay. But, Why? But that's not how it works. Like we actually no. I know that that's not what you guys want to happen, but that is what what is happening. But that's not. It's not like somebody walks over and <laughs> that's not that's, that's not how. Exactly what's happening. We well, thousands of people are walking in a day. Some of them turn themselves over. Some of them are caught. Tens of thousands a week are not. That is what is happening. The border issue is just one of many that have articles of impeachment waiting for Biden if Republicans take over in the midterms. Supposedly, MTG has led the charge to impeach Biden, calling for it again after his speech. But what about Trump? Hasn't he been divisive? Sorry, you said you feel like Joe Biden is dividing the country, but do you feel like Donald Trump is doing the same by falsely telling people that he won that election when he lost it? How does that divide the country? Questioning, questioning an election where there are obviously problems is, is dividing the country? Since when can we not ask questions about our elections? As a journalist for many years, I was a journalist after 2016, and I distinctly remember many people just like you asking a lot of questions about the 2016 election results. And nobody tried to shut you up. Nobody tried to tell Hillary Clinton to shut up. Nobody tried to tell Kamala Harris when she was questioning the uh, legitimacy of these electronic voting machines to stop. We're, we have freedom of speech in this country, and you of all people should appreciate that. You're supposedly a journalist. You should appreciate that. So I don't see how asking questions about an election where there are many problems is dividing a country. What I do see dividing a country is shutting people down, censoring people, canceling people, trying to destroy people's lives when they do ask questions. Last I heard, we still have the Constitution. It's hanging by a thread, thanks to some of the work some people in this area have done. But we're going to save that Constitution, and we're going to bring back freedom of speech. And maybe someday you'll thank us for that. Speaking of election interference, the senior FBI official Timothy Thibault on leave from his supervisory role after agency whistleblowers showed a pattern of political bias is now out. He's been accused of leading efforts to hide the Hunter Biden laptop, its authenticity, just before the 2020 election. Thibault denies those claims and his handlers say his resignation is just a coincidentally timed retirement. 
And now Biden's new Intel advisor is MSNBC analyst Jeremy Bash, a former CIA chief of staff who signed the letter saying the Hunter Biden laptop story was just Russian disinformation. Now that Zucker let it slip, Facebook frequently let the FBI weigh in on social media circulation guidelines, some GOP senators are demanding receipts, asking for any communication regarding the Hunter Biden laptop. Meanwhile, Twitter, which also stifled the Hunter story, still has Elon Musk to worry about as he gears up for trial. Citizen Free Press reports Musk is gathering evidence. Musk responded to a report that an expert says eight out of 10 accounts are fake, with sure sounds higher than 5%. There was no time to look into national security concerns regarding President Biden's son, but documents locked up and guarded by 24-7 Secret Service is the gravest concern. I'm getting emotional. I'm trying not to. But I care about my country so much. Uh, people, people, he had documents, he had documents. <laughs> According to Becker News, court filings confirm client attorney privilege documents were among the files collected during the Trump raid, prompting the Trump team to request a special master review. CNBC reports the judge will rule on that request later, but for now, the federal judge in Florida has unsealed a more detailed inventory of items FBI agents seized. So what did we find? I see magazines, newspapers, empty folders, documents without classification markings. Where is anything relating to nuclear codes, as frequently suggested by mass media? Also this week, the Boston Globe puts out this completely false headline. In Florida, don't say gay is now the law. Corporate news just can't let it go. The Parental Rights and Education Act doesn't even say don't say gay anywhere in it, but they know that. Twitchy.com catalogs the snarky responses to its blatant propaganda. I hear DeSantis is rounding up people who say gay and is forcing them to watch MAGA videos as conversion therapy. Shameful. My father said gay in Tallahassee and has been in jail since last Tuesday. And it's the Washington Post versus Libs of TikTok again after releasing this recording. I was calling uh, for information about gender affirming hysterectomies. Okay, so gender affirming hysterectomies. I've been in touch with quite a few hospitals, um, and a lot of them, well, they said they won't do it for, for my 16-year-old, um, and then I was told that this hospital might, and I also saw it on your website. Some, some departments cut off for 18. How old, how old is your patient? 16. Okay. All right. So they're in the clear. All right. Great. Is it a common procedure that you guys do for, for that age? Yes, um, we have um, all different type of age groups that comes in for that. For the gender, for the hysterectomy. Yes, ma'am. Okay, just out of curiosity, do you know like what's the youngest age you would do it on? I'm not sure, but I have seen younger kids, and I'm not, you know, either hip. I'm not allowed to say that, but mm -hmm. I have seen younger kids, like younger than your child age. The Washington Post reached out for comment. Sort of. Libs of TikTok, WAPO's Pete Jamison, reached out for comment, and I responded 12 minutes later, agreeing to an interview. He then published it hours later without responding to me until after publication. Now he's saying he can update the story with my comments. That's not how this works. And the account gets suspended again. In her substack, she responds, Washington Post claimed that I falsely suggested Children's National was doing hysterectomies on kids when I literally quoted the hospital's own website and staff. To nobody's surprise, Taylor Lorenz, the lunatic who showed up at my family's home to dox me, contributed to the report. Highlighting how WAPO and all the other propaganda puppets are lying, misleading, ignoring, or sensationalizing, that's your media malfeasance for the week.